Welcome back to the pod. Here we are, another week in our lives. Um, man, I got to tell you, I uh, finished listening to Jeanette McCurdy's book, finally. Uh, I'm glad my mom died. I'm sure you've heard of it. If you haven't, you live under a rock. Um, Jeanette McCurdy wrote a book about her life in acting, her life with her mother, and uh, how she arrived to her adulthood. Um, and man, it's devastating. First of all, I want to say she is an incredible writer. Like, so good. It's so sharp and smart and funny and to the point. Um, like, it it reads, I mean, I listened to the audiobook, but like, it reads so well. Um, but it's also devastating, man. Really devastating that any child um, should live like that, should grow up like that, should be in that situation. Um, I... I had a very parallel experience in LA to her, um, which was wild to read, you know? Uh, we had the same manager, managers and agents as kids. Um, we both ended up on Nickelodeon shows. I, I understand a lot of that experience. However, I always wanted to act and my mom, did a lot of legwork as a mom for me, but always in the service of like taking care of me and making sure uh, it, like I was okay. And it really breaks my heart to know um, what Jeanette was experiencing. And yeah, just how, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't quite have the words to, to speak about it just yet, uh, but I hope to talk to her at some point. Um, people are very good at hiding these things too, and man, it's I, it, it must be so insane to put it all out there in a book like that, and I'm just really blown away by uh, her talent, her honesty, her humanity, her expression, um, her uh, humor, and uh, the choices she's made into her adulthood, it's, it's pretty amazing, man, because that was some devastating shit. Uh, and it furthered my gratitude for ending up on a Scott Fellow show. Just saying. Um, yeah, so holy shit. If you haven't read I'm Glad My Mom Died and uh, you're interested in uh, fucked up childhoods, and or child acting, the child acting experience, uh, that is a quite the insight into uh, a version of it that is actually painfully more common than I would like to, to know. Um, but yeah, so there's that. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm about to go finish this movie. Um, yeah, which has been a long time coming and is a complicated process in and of itself, but I'm excited to go uh, complete a project and see people that I really like and really enjoy, um, and to go to a state I've never been, which is Montana. I'm gonna see some beauty. Um, today on the pod, I discovered this person just on Instagram, uh, I think during the pandemic, I, she just started like popping up on either TikTok or Instagram, I can't remember. Um, and I just really like resonated with what she was putting out there and I was interested with what she was educating people on. Uh, it was kind of on where the traditions of yoga come from and then um, a lot of education around sensuality. Sensuality. Our relationship to our very senses, to our body, to empowering our body, to working with our body, to loving our body, to being intimate with our body. It's, it's bigger than sexuality. Sexual energy or sexuality is like, I think it's held within sensuality, but sensuality is, is a much bigger thing and, and goes beyond just sex. Um, and I think it's a really important aspect of our lives that not enough of us are in relation with. Not enough of us are uh, 
paying attention to the fact that we're sensual beings, man. You're a sensual being, baby. Just got to get in touch with it, okay? Just got to get in there. Get into your senses. She taught me that we have six senses, not five. You're going to hear about that. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, her processing of turning 30. It's a thing, I'm telling you. If you haven't done it yet, it's a thing. Uh, we're going to talk about how she grew up, where she grew up, uh, what led her to founding the School of Sensual Arts. Um, and uh, yeah, we cover a lot. Um the ways we as humans process our lives through our bodies, through our minds, and trying to just kind of be in the best version of that as often as we can. I really enjoyed connecting with her, and I think you guys, and I hope you guys enjoy this conversation. There's a lot in here for you. If you're someone who feels numb a lot, numb in your body, turned off, cold, you know, not activated, not alive, not feeling strongly one way or the other, that you don't have a good sense of your intuition or your gut feeling. Um, you're, you're, there's a lot in this conversation for you. And uh, I say this as someone who experiences a ton of that. So I know I got a, a lot from this and I think you will too. Um, so thanks for being here. Smash that subscribe button. If you haven't, the like button, comment, share it. We're growing up. We're growing a podcast. We're out here. Enjoy this conversation with Henneke Patal. This podcast is brought to you by Element Electrolytes. L-M-N-T Electrolytes. I got to tell you guys, this is one of my favorite products even before them sponsoring the pod. So it's very cool that they're sponsoring my podcast. I love their support. And by you supporting Element, you help keep this going, help us keep it free, and help us continue this podcast for a long time. We're super happy to have them as sponsors. Like I said, even before them sponsoring the pod, electrolytes are something I take every day, and Element is actually my favorite brand. Their flavors taste great. There's no like additives. It's just the good stuff, okay? Um, electrolytes, some of you might think like, Devin, I'm not an athlete. I'm not a sports star. I'm not running marathons. Well, guess what? We all need electrolytes. It's not just for athletes. It's like foundational health and nutrient support for our bodies. Um, after you sleep, you lose electrolytes. If you're drinking, you lose electrolytes. If you're crying, you lose electrolytes. Basically anything we do, we're kind of sweating them and, and, and flushing them out of our body. So it's really important to replenish. It helps us sleep better, helps us stay more hydrated, helps us absorb more nutrients. So, uh, yeah, I'm a huge fan. Could not recommend this product enough. Uh, I'm super grateful to Element for supporting us. And right now, Element is offering my listeners a free sample pack with any purchase. That's eight single-serving packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all the different flavors, which are all delici delicious. I like the spicy chili ones. Um, the chocolate one's kind of cool, too. Uh, or you can share Element with a salty friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash growdevin. This deal is only available through my link, so you got to go to D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash grow Devon. You can try it totally risk-free, and if you don't like it, you can share it with someone, and Element will give you your money back. No questions asked. You got nothing to lose. Get hydrated, my friends. Stay salty. Hi, Henneke. Hi. <laughs> thanks for coming all the way to Los Angeles. Yeah, thanks for having me all the way from, you could probably guess from my accent. Uh, <laughs> it's hmm, not obvious Don't enough. tell me. <laughs> Mississippi? No. <laughs> Uh, the UK. Yeah, straight out of London. Welcome to California. I'm very excited to talk to you. Uh, I've been following your uh, platforms, your School of Sensual Arts. I think it's like just a really great uh, life topic that I want to get into. But before we do that, I want to ask you, how and where did you grow up? So I grew up just outside of London, actually, in the countryside. So okay. I'm a first generation British Indian. Okay. So my parents came over to the UK. Um, and then, yeah, it was really, it was really the countryside. So we were like the only Indians in the town. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, I went to college in a, in a really small city as well in the UK. And then I spent most of my 20s traveling. So hmm. I only got back to the UK probably like three years ago, just before the pandemic. Wow. And now I'm based there. Okay, yeah. where were you traveling? 
Um, all right. How long have we got? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love travel talk. I mean, no, I basically, I graduated. I studied law and then I was like, mm, I'm not sure I want to do this. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. So I was like, how can I use my degree in a way that I don't actually have to sit in an office. Yeah. <laughs> so I was working on like different research projects in Ghana and then I just did the backpacky thing yep. in Southeast Asia. And then I got that job in China for six months and I ended up staying there for almost three years. Wow. So yeah, it just You've seen that was a lot it. of the world. That was my twenties. It just sort of yeah. Wow. So Henneke runs and founded the School of Central Arts. You run a platform um, sharing how to empower individuals with their own sensuality. Yeah. Um, how did you, uh, I know it came out during the pandemic now, but how did you arrive to this? Yeah. I mean, I mentioned earlier about the kind of, the, the career choice of law when I was sure. 15 <laughs> and had to make that choice or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I just, I had got to the other end of, of that cycle of like learning and studying and being in a job for a couple of years. And feeling like, oh, wow, I've really like ticked all the boxes, like the education, like the apartment, the relationship, living abroad. Like, why am I so unhappy? Mm. Um, and bit by bit, my body was kind of shutting down. Um, and I didn't realize at that time it was a depression. Um, mm. So I was just kind of walking around, like numb to life, like in that routine very yeah. much. Um, and then the first indication to me that something was really wrong was that I stopped sensing my body. I stopped sensing intimacy, mm. like with my partner. And I was like, hmm, something ain't right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I really didn't even understand how to have that conversation with my partner at that time. So I just, yeah, I was just like, I just need to figure my body out. Like, what is my body trying to tell me? Mm. Why can't I feel myself? Like, I, I remember being a teenager and feeling so creative and so I love to dance and I love art and I just I, I just didn't want to do any of that anymore um so mm. yeah so it was really born from all the lessons that I learned to kind of turn my body back online and I typed into google like how to cure a numb body how to cure like a numb I don't know if I can say this on here, but like you can a numb, say anything. yeah, a numb vulva, because <laughs> mm -hmm. that's what I was having. Like this whole region, mm. the whole central region was just numb for me. Mm. And um, yeah, Google just didn't have the answers. <laughs> <laughs> Turns like, out. <laughs> yeah, like there was just no step to step process for how to do that. On so, Google. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I was already in Asia at this point. Mm -hmm. So I started sitting with different um guides and monks and masters and different people who had these really cool ancient tools um, to turn the body back online. Mm. And I thought there must be other people that have felt this or are feeling this. Absolutely. You might like to know what these tools are. It's like not even just turn your body back online, but just to like experience life more fully, like yeah. to, ex to sense life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. If we can't experience, I know for a fact there are hundreds of people listening to this right now going, that's me. Mm. Um, I know for, like I know for a fact because I, I go through times like that. Um, it, if I only experience life through my mind, mm. um, I, I'm missing it. Yeah. Uh, it drives me crazy when my whole life kind of pulls up into my head. Um, even though like my intellect is strong and protects me and gets me through things and helps my creativity, all that, when my whole life comes up here, um, I definitely have times where I feel numb in my body and our body is how we experience the world, the present moment, what's yeah. actually here for us in the here and now. Yeah. Um, so I know for a fact people uh, resonate with that and know there isn't I don't think it's talked about in our society often. No. I think it's pretty normalized to have closed, like turned off bodies. Yeah. Um, and this like, this is beyond sexuality. It's yeah. sensuality. Um, do, do you uh, define like a difference between those two? Yeah, absolutely. I think sensuality is, it's, it's the way that you sense the world mm. around you. And 
there are six senses actually. So uh, not like the movie, but <laughs> <laughs> I see you dead have your people. regular. Yeah, <laughs> not like that. Oh shit, Hanukkah! <laughs> <laughs> this took a turn. <laughs> yeah, this took a turn I wasn't prepared for. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you have your regular five senses, but then the sixth one is your intuition mm. and the intuitive sense of like trusting what all those sensations in your body are. Mm. Those are the things that I think really can connect us to the life that we want to live and like mm. our if you if if these are the words you use like higher power or um god or whatever it is that you use that is bigger than yourself or nature yeah. you know and like to reconnect with the, the rhythms of nature you'd get there through intuition hmm. um and also i mean in one of the um like the paths that i share it's it's tantra mm -hmm. and um that is one of the most misunderstood paths ever um because people always think that Tantra is sting and sting is sex, right? So yeah. there's this yeah. kind of, <laughs> <laughs> right? So I have to like very much explain that sex is 1% of the entire ocean of Tantra. Mm -hmm. And there's this whole 99.99 other percent of Tantra, which is the path of love and acceptance. Mm. So it's about accepting all of life exactly as it is. And I think in India, when that came around and when the idea of it was kind of shared with the West, the fact that there was a path that accepted sex as a part of life, mm. rather than repressing it, and actually gave people tools for how to harness sexual energy as, an, as a creative life force. Yeah. So that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be with another being, yeah. but that could also be used like inwardsly, like Taoism when Tantra moved over to even further East, mm -hmm. they use sexual energy to like heal their organs. Like they send sexual energy to different parts of their body to unblock mm. what is blocked. Cause it's, I mean, it's like the most powerful energy that creates life. Yeah. So, why don't you use it for yourself? <laughs> right. right, right. So yeah, so there's so many different uses. So I think that's just kind of go back to your question. Yeah. I think that's that's one of the distinguishments that mm -hmm. yes, sensuality is is a force that you can use to sense outside, but also to, to reckon with or to assimilate with what's going on inside mm. as well. Yeah, it's so needed. Uh, I Yeah, I definitely know. If people have even heard of Tantra, they just think of Tantra as like, you just like hold off from climaxing and then you get superpowers. I think that's all anyone <laughs> yeah, that's thinks of Tantra. <laughs> yeah. But um, I know it's like a much wider uh, school of practice and it's been around a really long time, which lets me know, which lets me know like, even though I feel like my body going numb sometimes is due to the modern world that I live in, mm. it's probably not. It's probably something we as humans have dealt with for a long time because Tantra yeah. is like super old, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's old. So it means this has been a conversation with people's humanity for a very long time. Yeah, absolutely. And I think having having this kind of philosophy or way of accepting every single part of us ourselves exactly as we are is really liberating because mm. even numbness then or whatever emotion we're experiencing whether it's anxiety or stress um it's like this is this is also a sensation this is also a part of life and this is also just like all the other emotions like say emotion is energy in motion right so it's just another energy in motion so it's not good it's not bad it mm. just is mm. um and i think when i realized like numbness is also a feeling. It's not a void, total void. Like you think, oh, I'm just not feeling anything, but that's also a feeling. That's right. also an experience. Right. And that was really empowering because it yeah. was like, oh, there is something happening and there is maybe a message that's trying to come through about maybe how I'm living my life now and that it's maybe not working for me. <laughs> right, if you actually listen to the numbness or like access it rather than feeling shame or guilt about it, which then you like just put arm's length, you know, yeah. you put distant, like shame and guilt are rough emotions. I try and not judge any emotion, but shame yeah. and guilt are rough ones because they create uh, a judgment and then like a disconnect from the experience. Yeah. Um, and yes, if I am judging what I'm going through with shame, if I'm feeling bad or wrong or broken for my numbness, my lack of whatever, desire, mm. activation, if I'm judging it and feeling shame about it, then I'm kind of like, I'm disconnected from the experience rather than being able to like sense into it and maybe create some movement, I guess. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. And it's so like there are so many different parts of Tantra, but one of the parts is just that we're cyclical beings mm -hmm. and that everything kind of comes in cycles. And yeah. that's that's really nice to know as well, because it's like this won't last forever. Yeah. It's just a part of my cycle and yeah. things will change. Yeah. Um, and in that, like it connects us so much more to nature. Yeah. It connects us so much more to just all the rhythms that are yeah. taking place around us, which is really nice. Yeah, I'd love for my life to be linear. There are often times <laughs> I would love for it to just go in a fucking straight line, but it doesn't. Stuff yeah. comes back. Like right now I'm being like smacked by a cycle of shit. I don't know, April kind of, some shit happened seven years ago and I don't try and hold on to the date, but something in my body mm. is like bringing up this cycle of processing some big shit in my life and like man i it's like i'm like ah oh, i wish life was linear like i thought i made it through this in so yeah. many ways and of course it's just not the way we process it's not it's not our nature it's yeah. not nature itself yeah and the body's like the body is on that natural clock that natural yeah. cycle like have you ever set your alarm for i don't know seven or eight or ten or whatever in the morning and you wake up like one minute before the alarm the alarm like your body just it, it really remembers stuff mm -hmm. so it's it's processing all the time yeah it's really it's quite fascinating and there are so many kind of natural processing methods that we just don't do as mammals anymore like one of my favorite ones is just shaking like all mammals shake to what release you, what do you mean by this like like just shaking like just, your body, just like just, shaking? just just put on a piece of music and just shake your body. All right. Like all mammals do it. Like you see dogs, they get out of oh, water. Oh yeah, they go. <laughs> yeah, and any animal that experiences like even a small kind of traumatic experience will just huh. shake off its body. And huh. we just don't do that that much anymore. I've never thought about that, <laughs> but I have noticed it in dogs. Yeah. That's cool. All right, so there's like a simple one. What else? What else you got? That's fun. I like that. That's a fun <laughs> thing to think about. Like, <laughs> just shake my body out. Yeah. I kind of need to because like emotions get stuck. Yeah. Processing gets stuck, especially when you're trying to process it all intellectually. Like, oh, yeah. I already know all the answers of my life intellectually. Yeah. I know them in my head. Yeah. Like, that's why it's annoying sometimes. Like, tell someone what you're going through and they're like, well, here's the answer. And it's like, yeah, I know the fucking it. Like, I know it on the intellectual plane, yeah. but it's not in my body. Like yeah. it's not landing in me. Yeah, and we look at the word to embody something, to embody a principle means to move it through, down your body, into your body. It's like mm -hmm. really live it out. Um, so yeah, we just, yeah, we need to move a little bit back more into our bodies. <laughs> I think so. That's why, I, that's why I, I don't know, you like popped up on my explore feed or something on, on Instagram and oh. I just, I just, Reson I was just like, this is amazing uh, reminders and just like encouragement to get into our bodies. Mm. Um, and I started following you then and just seeing like, okay, School of Sensual Arts. I will say, and I have to ask you about this, because I have this piece of doubt even in myself when it comes to, <sighs> we live in a world where like you have to put it all out there online in order to mm. find an audience, in order to find the people that you actually want to connect with. Yeah. So you have to put everything out there in this, in this way, in this, in this clean, pretty package or even messy package, but even that's part of the package, right? Like there's this, there's this nature to our social media world um, that, I, I mean, I'm a part of it too, but I have this, this, concern or doubt or skepticism about, I guess it's like my meditation te teacher taught me about um, this concept called worthy inquiry, which is like like for the, the guru to deliver the wisdom to the people, someone had to show up with worthy inquiry, not mm. that person who's like, yeah, fucking prove it. Yeah. <laughs> like not worthy inquiry. You don't get my wisdom then. You yeah. know what I mean? Like show up with worthy inquiry and you will receive yeah. the wisdom. But we live in a world where that's not that's not what's happening. We're putting our shit out there trying to call people in. It's a different relationship. And I get concerns with myself that by doing that, it's like this thing that's really deep in me is then becoming kind of an abstracted product mm. and not in my body anymore just by the nature of 
you know, making it a product on online. Yeah. Um, do you come up against that at all? Do yeah. you find that? Absolutely. I think condensing concepts that have taken <laughs> you and your body lifetime to understand into 60 seconds. That, <laughs> it, that it, thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah it's turning really, something that took your whole life yeah. into a fucking meme. Yes, exactly. It's like, yeah. Ah. Yeah. And, and it kind of strips that whole process of the context in which that understanding came about, which yes. it can be really difficult. And when you get, well, of course, if you put yourself on social media, there'll be people who agree with you and there'll be people who, who don't agree with For you. For sure. Um, and they're just not seeing that whole other context outside the 60 seconds. Exactly. And so I just, I wish people would be kinder online and just know that, okay, we're delivering a message because we get 60 or 90 seconds to do it. Right. But there is, there's other thought and conversation around what we're sharing. Right. Yeah. yeah. This isn't, this isn't the only piece yeah. of my thought or belief. Yeah. This is, is coming with like, whole bunch of context yeah there's a lot of keyboard warriors out there <laughs> yeah yeah i i've i have learned though because i i always wanted every i i didn't want anyone to not like me for so much of my life that now i'm in a more liberated place of like if some people are talking shit on my posts like it's a good thing yeah like it truly is yeah. it's like good that means I'm actually like speaking my truth. Yeah. It means I'm actually out there like in the world because of course there's people who disagree. Yeah, and like, you're anchored in that. And, yeah. You know, it's great to start conversation. Yeah, I think it it's really like, is. great, disagree yeah. with me, perfect. Yeah, I think my platform really, it really took off. I started speaking quite a bit about cultural appropriation mm. uh, and that was during the pandemic as well. And it was something that I had kind of worn in my heart for a really long time. You know, I'd trained as a yoga teacher and you type yoga into Google or YouTube and you definitely don't see anyone from... My culture, I'm Indian, right? So yeah. you definitely don't see anyone that's Indian that's sharing it in the mainstream. Right. And I guess the yoga in the studios that I would go to and try to teach in would just, they would just ask for such a different thing than what I knew yoga to be. Hmm. Um, and so that's what I started sharing. And that really grated on people. And I didn't want it to grate on people, but I just wanted to share, like, that's my experience. Mm. Um, but yeah, it really sparked a lot of conversation <laughs> yeah. for sure for sure yeah i yeah. get it because that conversation is uh it's there there's a lot of context and a lot of different opinions and it's hard even if you're like hey this is cultural appropriation and it's bad i've found like but cultures naturally appropriate like there's mm. some natural process to culture yeah. does get take like i don't yeah. know how you put that genie back in the bottle like yeah that's what happens you get yeah. exposed to something and then if you like it, you like take your version of it or you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like there's absolutely. a natural process to it, but then there's also examples where you're like, oh, this is a mess. Yeah. And I think um, there's never, I never felt like pointing a finger at anyone. Yeah. I think there's lots of different approaches and lots of people speak about it in different ways. And yeah. I, I personally felt like the answer to appropriation is just simply education. It's just sharing like, hey, there's this other way to do things that you might like to do. Yeah. You knew about them. Maybe you just don't know about I, them. I saw those posts so, and I actually found like, yeah, I found yours not triggering in any way. They yeah. were just like, here's what the real shit is. <laughs> like, <laughs> here's where yeah. the tradition comes from and here's yeah. what it's about. Like, yeah. yeah. But I, I really do think like with yoga and tantra, I think the more people that are practicing it in whatever shape or form, the better. Mm. And I think the, the reason why these ancient Indian arts are, have it, like have continued is because they weren't meant to stay exactly in the exact same container that they were in. Like they're adaptable and pliable and flexible. And that's why there are so many different schools. Right. Right. So, right. yeah. So I think I've, <laughs> I'm softening in my, <laughs> in my approach. <laughs> Definitely softening in it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like I don't want to gatekeep something that is obviously so incredible for humans to experience. Right. Why would I want to do that? Right. And yeah, yeah it kind of, everything kind of enters the natural flow of life and goes and expands and some people exploit shit yeah. and some people distort it and turn it into something ugly and then it's I feel like in my life it's just about finding rather than like crusading against people I disagree with I'm more just like how do I find what I'm about like yeah. how do I find the people who I'm like that like that's the music I fuck with or yeah. like that's the practices like oh they get it like I just want to be in those spaces yeah. you know yeah you just have to and and if if it doesn't exist if you feel like oh that's it just doesn't exist then create it like yeah. don't be afraid of is that what creating you did it. well 
I guess, I guess in a way, yeah. in a way, like I started to share. And now like my yogic practice is really like really out of the box that I trained in, to be honest. It's like very, very cyclical. It's very soft. It's very, it's changed also like as I've, as I've grown up um, and it used to be like really like power driven and actually quite competitive, <laughs> which is like not yoga. It's perfect. <laughs> yoga competition <laughs> yeah which i'm is, gonna beat everyone <laughs> yeah and um and also like competing against myself which mm. meant like injury mm. um and so i've just yeah there's so much softer now and it's so much more playful cool yeah it's just a place to play cool <laughs> yoga is gonna come back into my life at some point i've only done it for like very brief stints and everyone because of how i am a lot of people like assume i'm like a yogi I feel like I'm a yogi in spirit, but not in body. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's only asana, like the physical practice. It's yes. only one part of the practice. Yes. So you very much could be a yogi. That's right. It's like I meditate and I've actually studied some of the Vedas. And like, yeah. I, I, there's a lot I resonate with um, from that world. But uh, just my body um, doesn't bend and it hurts. <laughs> what do you enjoy doing in your body? In my body? I like dancing. I do mm, like dancing. Fun. I love a boogie. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things to do in my body where I feel free mm. um, and feels like necessary. If I haven't gone like out dancing with friends in a while, like it's something I need to do. You get an itch. Yeah, yeah. it's like, uh, let's just go have a night. Like, let's just go get sweaty dancing. Yeah. And like, <laughs> but it's so fun. I, I'm very blessed with like the friends I have because uh, it's like, it doesn't matter where we are. As long as the music is decent enough, I don't care what's happening. We'll all dance. Yeah. Like, and we don't, I don't need to dance with some I don't need to dance like on someone. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd actually prefer not to. Like I prefer to dance like on me, you know, with me. Um, back up on me. Yeah, I want to back up on myself. Um, so that's like, that's one of my kind of essential body practices. Um, I work, work out. So like, I don't know, weight lift and like mm. go on walks and stuff. Mm. But my my body's been, I told you, there's like a cycle coming up right now. And my body's been pretty shut off mm -hmm. um yeah any recommendations for how to get back into shake it shake and scream <laughs> yeah yeah honestly <laughs> i could use it i could use a shake and scream yeah okay. i think screaming is another one that's like just so i mean it's really not socially acceptable very but much again not. it's like it's very it feels so good yeah like feel you know like the belly is the second brain right everyone says mm. it's the second brain mm -hmm. and screaming you can literally feel like angry energy moving from your belly out mm. and that is it's like a cleanse it's so nice so you scream into a pillow or what well if you can scream outside scream outside but it's, it's one uh, trick. not recommended in los angeles oh yeah that's you know true I mean? you might get locked up yeah but, it's just um, intense <laughs> just, just harsh on my neighbors just me fucking yelling i had a teacher that recommended like folding up a a tissue paper, like a Kleenex and okay. like a really small fold, okay. putting it in your mouth and you can like just bite down into it and you still get that sensation Ooh. of like that intense right. energy inside you moving out. But yeah, you just don't wake your neighbors. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm going to try this. I got some anger in me. I got to get out. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, what else? Give me some other tips. <laughs> I, I just called you here to help me personally. This isn't about a podcast. I'm just looking for tips to get into my body and process my yeah. stuck emotions. I suppose like with the tantric path, it's just moving from repression to expression. So even the fact that you're speaking about it is yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's huge. We live in a very repressed uh, culture mm. and uh, I try and not be repressed or I try and catch up when I've been repressing something it, my luckily I'm glad you said the sixth sense is intuition luckily I feel like I spent a lot of my 20s training my touch with my intuition I feel like that oh. sense uh, above all is very strong I've like really learned to trust when I hear it and know what it sounds like and know when my inner guidance is subtly kind of letting me know something. Yeah, and how um, do you mean by touch? Like, what what is it about me, that sense? Um, meaning because I really get you saying it's another sense, like my intuition, yeah. There, I, I touch my intuition. Yeah, it's, cool. It's like, it is a feeling, like I, I feel it when it's guiding me somewhere. Mm. It does sound like a little voice sometimes, but like really it's a, it's a touch, it's like a feeling. And I have practiced, listening 
to it, mm. you know? I think because I know we've all had this happen. This, this little something in you says, go that way, and you don't. Mm. And you yeah. go this other way. Yeah. And then that other way proves to be just wrong, just, yeah. just not great. Yeah. You don't end up where you wanted. You end up in some situation that you're like, oh, that little, that small little thing in me that said, mm, go that way. And when I didn't, life ended up less good, yeah. ended up less cool. I feel like I did that enough times. I actually got to know, oh, wait, that's that thing. Like, yeah. that's that's actually the good part of me guiding me. Yeah, absolutely. And kind of having that awareness of this is a, these are systems that our bodies have created over thousands and thousands of years. Like, yeah. They were... They were created to keep us safe, like yeah. to ward us away from the lions and the predators sure. and all of that stuff. And so if there is that gut feeling, then even if you don't know what it is, just follow it. Mm -hmm. Don't let anyone like gaslight you into being like, oh, no, no, it's fine. You'll be fine. Just like really listen to it. Yeah. 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 But it's tricky, right? Because then we also have in our biology just the flight or fight. Like yeah. there's also that thousands of years something telling us we're unsafe that's actually fine yeah. you know like it's tricky because the feeling of your intuition and the feeling of just like fight or flight telling you to run even when it's maybe totally fine they kind of exist in a very similar sensation and in a very similar place so i think it does take a lot of time and uh, sensitivity to know what the difference is. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, the wisdom is in the discernment between yeah whether to stay or whether to run. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And yeah, I also I also feel like intuition goes beyond, and that this might just be my beliefs. I don't I don't know how everyone likes to define it, but I also feel like my intuition goes beyond just keeping me safe. Like I don't know what it fully is or where it comes from. I know there is some science that backs that time is existing always, like all the past and all the future and now is existing in the same moment. So I, I don't know what my words are for it, but my intuition feels like it's beyond keeping me safe. Mm. It, it's some, some, something that loves me Yeah, is like trying to get me to the good life. Yeah. Like something that loves me actually wants me to make the best decisions. Yeah. Um, that's how I try and look at it. And I don't know if it's me, my higher self, God, my ancestors. I, you know, I don't like need to define it. Yeah. I just like to imagine and like to, I just like feel it that like my intuition is actually some form of love guiding me. Yeah, that's such a nice way to put it. It's like making your mind your friend. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Like, let's be buddies. Let's not fight anymore. I mean, <laughs> we gotta try. <laughs> yeah. I, the The alternative is so awful. Yeah. The alternative of feeling like your mind is against you, and I know people can feel that. I felt it at times, like feeling like your mind is against you. Yeah. Feeling like your body is against you, like. It, it does take choice, work, compassion, support to actually decide. And over time, let me get my body on my side. Mm -hmm. Let me get on the side of my body. Let me get on the side of my mind. Let me get my mind on the side of me. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Oh my, a lot of my work is about about making the body the friend, about making the mm. mind the friend. And um, it's, it's crazy. I hear a lot of people that pass through the school say, I've never speak to anyone else the way that I speak to different parts of my body or different parts of my mind or different experiences that I have, why do I speak to myself that way? You know, and that's, it's so true. That internal voice can be so loud and we would never, never, you know, say that unless it's maybe a keyboard warrior on, right, <laughs> on Instagram, right, right, right. they might say it. But right. um, yeah, isn't that funny? Like there's such a different standard for ourselves sometimes right. than for the rest of Right, you would never tell a friend like, Oh, you look so fucking ugly, yeah. you piece of shit. Yeah. You're so dumb, you idiot. Yeah. You made the wrong choice and that <laughs> makes you bad forever. Like you would never say this to someone in your life. Yeah. You wouldn't even say it to a stranger. Yeah, um, yeah I feel like uh, one of the kind of easiest blockers to sensuality is just what do you say to yourself when you look in the mirror? Mm. What is those unconscious thoughts when you look in the mirror? And we all have them. 
oh, my fucking yeah. hair is too whatever. My nose isn't right. My elbow is bony. Like yeah. we all have these things. And that's like an immediate disconnect to actually being in and on the side of your body. Absolutely. And so much of it can be that which is unspoken as well. So the one, like the thoughts that actually come around that we hear are those which are kind of conscious. And then the ones that we don't hear are the ones that make us kind of hug in our belly when we don't realize through the day or like mm. scrunch up our shoulders mm. or maybe somebody said something in elementary school that we're still holding on to that we don't remember what it even was. But right. we, you know, there are all those other Right, but bits. it makes us yeah, tense like, without even realizing it. Yeah, like the bit underneath the iceberg, I think that really fascinates me because mm. do, do we have control over that? Not consciously, but can we tap into it? I really think we can. Mm. I really think we can. Yeah. Yeah, that's the tricky part. We we can see certain problems. Yeah. You talk about the iceberg. You can see the tip of the iceberg. Underneath is most of us. Like I feel like most of our patterns are subconscious mm. and unconscious. And can we access them? I have to hope so. I have to hope so too. Yeah. yeah. I think sometimes it takes... Sometimes it takes uh, kind of daily discipline, small yes. steps forward, repeated. I think sometimes it takes an extraordinary experience. Mm. Like sometimes it does take something kind of drastic to get us into our unconscious. I mean, even trauma, which is awful every time, uh, we're all going to be traumatized in our lives. But sometimes the, the, the discomfort of trauma is so strong it's getting in there somewhere deep and sometimes it actually can lead to a lot of clarity, even mm. if it comes with a lot of kind of side effects that are awful. Um, but I have found in times of extreme trauma, there have been moments where it's like life gets real clear. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm so uncomfortable. I have no capacity for anything that isn't kind of like truth. Yeah. Yeah. When you're at rock bottom, there's nowhere else to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, things get very clear. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. you have to find a way. You have to find a way, and your body will. Your body is built for survival, so it will find that way. Yeah, mm. yeah, and our bodies are also built, which I'm sure is what you teach at your school. Our bodies are built for more than survival. Yeah, they're be built for beauty and connection <laughs> yeah. and intimacy and like yeah. fucking healing. Yeah, like my goodness, during the pandemic. I, I learned more than ever. I've, I've known I love people my whole life. And like, this goes very beyond sexual intimacy, but like in the pandemic, I, I was going crazy without touch mm. and without looking in someone's eyes. I had my, my roommate who I love dearly. Um, and we were at least looking at each other and talking, but we weren't cuddling, you know, yeah. my, my boy Theo, we weren't, <laughs> we weren't cuddling and, you know, rubbing each other's feet every night. Um, but, uh, but like, Man, that time was so hard and so illuminating to like, I, I, we are here as humans to connect with one another. Yeah. And like, it's essential. Yeah, It's absolutely. essential. It's non-negotiable is what I've discovered. Yeah, absolutely. And I think touch is one of those senses that has been really demonized, actually. Yeah. Um, and so sometimes it's it can be, for some people, it's their own touch on their own body and kind of actually really fully experiencing their own touch, but also receiving touch from the same gender is like, oh, no, no, I can't touch a bro or like, right. you know, it, but it's- It's a thing. It's a, it is a, oh, thing. It's a thing. It is a thing. Yeah. And it's like, but we are such sensate beings that like, does it really matter? Like if yeah. it's, does it always, does touch always have to be sexual? Like right. if touch is such an important part of connection and living and healing, then right. like, it's really nice to just hug also. Yeah, you know? like, yeah. It doesn't a nice need to be, hug. Yeah. yeah. Touch doesn't always need to be sexual is what I'm saying. Right, Yeah. right. And it can still be just, I don't know, I found it to be super vital. I'm pretty like touchy-feely, so yeah. I, uh, I learned that I need it. And I think a lot of people do. There are times where I'm going through something and it, and it, and it seems like I'm just spinning mentally for a long time and just like one experience with someone just like, just like touching each other's hands for a second and yeah. like talking. My my friend, uh, my friend Jez one time, um, 
I, I see her very not often. We we grew up in Georgia together. She was like my first girlfriend when I was like five or something. <laughs> but uh, but she lives in New York. I, I see her every couple years, right? But she was out here one time, and she does this thing. It's more for her um, like neurodivergence. It's like her stemming. It's just like something that grounds her. But she she was talking to me. We were like sitting at a bar, and she was just pinching my my elbow skin huh. while talking, and it was the most endearing comforting like yeah. looking in my eyes we're having a full-on conversation and she just started like just playing with it's a really fun like part of it's a fun part because well. there's not nerves <laughs> on it which is weird but the skin moves which gives you sensation yeah it was the strangest most intimate grounding like non-sexual but like was like healing it, yeah. it like put me in my body and she was doing it to actually ground herself but like it literally put me in my body and I was just, I, I never forgot it. I was like, Jez, that is the weirdest and most enjoyable, like never stop. Yes. <laughs> never stop. If we're talking, just play with my elbows. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And just like an affirming like touch on your shoulder or yeah. even if, you know, even if it's just a look directly in your eyes as that. well, like being touched by that. And I think people are really scared to do that. Yeah. Nowadays, there's this yeah. technique, um, tantric technique called yin vision, you know, okay. like yin yang. Mm -hmm. And like, so I always explain yang vision is like the way that you might look at somebody on public transport if you live in a city, which okay. is like maybe just seeing like, or the way you might walk past a stranger so you see them for their physicality or like, you might very briefly notice like the color of their top or their hair or something. Sure. And kind of you're seeing them and you're not really seeing them. Yeah. And then yin vision is kind of going beyond the physical. So you connect your eyes to your heart and you actually see that like, this is a human being that has had an experience, mm. like whether that's a good experience or a bad experience, but they've had an experience and that is worthy of connection and attention. Yeah. Um, and it, that's quite a fun game to play on public transport because <laughs> like I'm just sending you lots of love and you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might be weird. It if could you get you in trouble. Yeah, too. I was gonna say <laughs> it might create some. That's gonna create some maybe goodness, maybe strangeness in yeah. your life. Yeah, but, but you can beautiful. also do it in the mirror. You can also yeah. do it to like different body parts if you have like trouble with different body parts. Um, like looking at those body parts and just creating that different narrative. Yeah. Like looking with the eyes of love, you say, right. with yin vision. Or a partner as well. It can be so beautiful to experience that with a partner or a close friend. Definitely. Yeah. Yet the mirror is really interesting. I was yeah. going through a very heartbroken major breakup in my life and I discovered it's such a it was such a weird thing to do, it felt like, but I I needed it and it was healing. I was like at the gym, just like broken, you know, going mm. through a breakup, just like, if I have bigger muscles, I won't hurt, you know, yeah. just classic. Yeah. Um, everyone looks great after a breakup. Well, not everyone, but that's one path I know a lot of people take. It's yeah. just like, <laughs> yeah. I won't cry if my like, muscles are big, yeah. but I'm looking in the mirror and I was just so broken. And I just looked at the broken me mm. and just said like, I love you, man, and I see you, and like I know it's hard right now, but I got you, and like we're gonna get through this, yeah. you know? Like, because at that time, I, I don't, I probably had people in my life who were saying that to me, but also like the depth of how broken I felt, I, I wasn't really showing anyone because it's yeah. so private. Yeah. But I knew it. And so just looking into my own eyes, being witnessed by someone, even if it's myself, saying like, I see you, man. And like, I know it's really fucking hard. And that's worthy of acknowledgement, but also like, it's gonna be okay. I'm like, I got you. Yeah. Um, it, it was a practice I, I used during that time and it was like deeply healing. That's really powerful. Like yeah. I feel emotional hearing that. Yeah. And I think to hold yourself in your worst <sighs> is really brave. It's really brave to be able to see that and to be like, yeah, this hurts and I can see I'm hurting and I'm gonna hold myself. Yeah, I'm actually gonna like let, allow it. Yeah. Not just do a bunch of push-ups. <laughs> like yeah. I'm actually gonna like, I am broken right now. Like it's real, I'm, f I'm a mess. And like, I see you, man, I witness you. And like, we're, we are here. Mm. Isn't this life, huh? Um, yeah, I really wish more people could hold themselves like that. Yeah. I think a lot of, um, 
I think a lot of responsibility gets put on when people have partners. I think a lot of it gets put on the partner to hold them. I know I've done it. I've been yeah, a codependent lover, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but when you put it all on a partner, like you're missing out on your own, like your own intimacy, yeah. being intimate with myself. Yeah. Like, yeah. I have my back, you know? Yeah. And that's, it's so nice to be in independent love. Yes. <laughs> It's amazing. It's joyful. It's joyful. There's yeah. space in independent love. Yeah. There's like space for improvisation and freedom and like discovery still, which yeah. is what I like. Codependent yeah. love just becomes this fucking. Yeah. Like a drawbridge and, and it's like one piece is going to fall and then the other piece is just going to fall. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah. Can't ever get it going. Yeah. Um, mm. I also heard a great, uh, forget who told me, someone, someone defined prayer as paying attention. And I love that because that feels like a lot of what you're talking about with this yin vision is kind of seeing with love, pay attention to like seeing into a body part, like yeah. pay attention to the experience, to witnessing, to the acknowledgement. And so some form of that is prayer. It's Absolutely. And it's like making life the prayer, right? So mm -hmm. it's paying attention to everything. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, I was in India earlier this year and I went into a temple in my dad's town and it is a full sensory experience to be in a temple in India. Like the bells are so loud. <laughs> like, like Incense your burning. whole body is moving, you yeah, know, yeah, and there's yeah. like candles everywhere mm. and colors. Thanks and for like, listening to that Anami podcast. So, Anami is like meds declassified for adulthood. So, Visit anami.co for free India, lessons on like, personal finance, on career senses. readiness, yeah. Yeah. personal yeah. development, yeah. and more. Mm -hmm. All taught by and, um, expert um, influencers and creators. That way We've got everything like, you wish you learned in school so you can drive in adulthood. That's anami.co. Yeah, by like sound vibration and light and all this stuff that you have no other choice but to be in the present moment mm. when your senses are alive. And I think it's bringing that as a practice into the everyday, like really allowing those chimes, like those inner chimes to be just as loud. Mm. Yeah? So good. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Um, do you have a, I've never been to India. Do you have a, do you have a recommendation for someone who's never been a way to see India? A recommendation of like where to go yeah or? just kind of like how to do how to do it for my first time how to do india hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> well it's it's such a huge country and every single region is kind of like its own country right um because it's got different language it's got different food right um so it really depends on like what kind of experience you're after mm -hmm. um i mean the south is just gorgeous like backwaters like in Kerala for example backwaters and Ayurveda which is the science of life yeah. and a lot of like the spices and things like that are grown there yeah um and then you have like it, you have the colonial history as well so you, you can also see like in Rajasthan for example you have a lot of forts and like beautiful buildings and stuff but I think the thing that really calls me to India is like when you do practices in India, it's like there's this energy that's been cultivated there for thousands and thousands of years of spiritual practices. Yeah. So they just feel really amplified there. Yeah. So trying out um, a meditation course or yeah. a yoga course or something like that is really cool to do there because cool. you feel that that cultivation. And it's such a normal everyday part of everyone's lives there yeah. that it's, yeah, you just, it's easy to sink into. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I hope yeah. To, I'm going to make it there at some point. My, yeah. my meditation practice, I'm pretty sure comes like if it dates back to what I've been taught, it dates yeah. back to India for yeah. sure. Like it comes from a lineage of teachers, you know, that's spread out over however many years, you know, yeah. so I'll end up there at some point. Um, well, this has been awesome. It's been amazing. Really enjoyed talking to you. Yeah. You too, Devin. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thanks for talking, <laughs> growing up. Yeah. And sensuality. Sensuality is a part of growing up. Yes, it is. Yeah. We and are it's all sensual beings. Yeah, exactly. Like, I know some people are like, I'm not. And maybe, maybe there's a spectrum of people who really are not, I guess. But I'm just like, we are sensual beings. Like, mm. we have senses. We experience the world through our senses. That's what that means. So it's about kind of empowering that, practicing that, getting in touch with it, turning it on. You nailed it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> do you have, let's give a tip, because I like doing that at the end of an episode. Mm -hmm. um, 
let's uh, do you have a tip for uh i mean i guess i guess where you were um for someone who has noticed that their body is cold it's turned off and they would like to start to change that mm. Yeah, I mean, it's re it sounds really simple, but just to find a form of movement that you enjoy. Okay. And it doesn't mean like something that you force yourself to do. It's like something that you genuinely, genuinely feel like, I really like doing this. Because as you do that, the sensations in your body, it's like you like them and then they like you, right? Mm. So you'll start to form this conversation, I'd say. Mm. So it's like just starting to form a conversation with your body. Um, cool. through something that you like doing. Cool. Yeah. yeah, even going on walks, right? Yeah. Like I love a walk. I it It's something, that conversation starts, I'm able to like feel my body more if I'm like just on a walk outside noticing the trees and then I'm noticing my body. And yeah, and nature's like really there to help us. So cold plunging is amazing. Yeah, for sure. It's really like, oh, there's no, again, there's nowhere else you can be when you're in ice cold water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but presence yeah. to that sensation. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. it's like, wow, I do have this sensate, alive body. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I found that's another hard part about cities is yeah. like the that I don't have immediate access to like a, just seeing nature yeah um because yeah things seem to make more sense uh more sense sense things th <laughs> seem to make more sense when i'm around nature um awesome henneke where can people find you yeah um so it's the school of sensual arts mm -hmm. or you can find me on instagram that's usually where i hang out most um henneke patel <laughs> p-e-t-a-l yes on instagram cool <laughs> yeah uh, yeah, we'll put all that info below the pod here. And um, thank you for being here. And thanks for being you. Good luck turning 30. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>